Today we're doing a comparison in between 8, 16 and 32 gigabytes of RAM in 2024 and with DDR5. And I believe this is important because DDR5 did change some things compared to DDR4. But before going into that, just let me tell you that the configurations used in this video are 1 times 8 gigabytes because there are no DDR, at least desktop DDR5, 4 gigabyte sticks. And even if they were, they were there to buy, well, it wouldn't just really make sense to get one in 2024. 2 times 8 gigabytes and 2 times 16 gigabytes running all at the same frequency and timings of 6000 CL36, 36, 36, 36 72, with also some sub timings actually manually tuned in order to avoid some performance differences due to that. What does not fluctuate though is today's sponsor's latencies that are always low. Today's sponsor is Maximum Settings, a cloud-based gaming service where you won't need to spend thousands of dollars to upgrade your PC or a personal nuclear plant to boot up your system. Just do it! And for as low as 9.95 Canadian dollars a month, you can play the most recent games on your computer, even if your hardware isn't prepared. Sign up today for your full Linux gaming PC with no resource sharing and start enjoying high-level gaming on any PC. As for the DDR5 changes, we do have some. For example, the fact that DDR5 has its own power regulation and management in each stick, while DDR4 was controlled by the motherboard, but for this video I believe that the most important thing for DDR5 is the fact that each stick of RAM is dual channel. And I say this with quotation marks because they are indeed dual channel, as DDR5 presents two memory channels as opposed to only one with DDR4. Although DDR4 has 64 bits per channel, while DDR5 has two channels of 32 bit each. Meaning that we do have dual channel, but with the same buzz width. And since the mainstream CPU series like the AMD Ryzen or the Intel Core i support only 128 bit buzz, we could say that you are using dual channel for the RAM, but single channel for the CPU, as you would only be using 64 bit buzz with only one DDR5 stick. And that can be seen if you use CPU-Z for example, where two sticks of DDR4 will show up as 2x64 bit, while two sticks of DDR5 will show up as 4x32 bit. And this can actually help in some scenarios as we do not have to wait for a new refresh in order to make use of, of some unused memory banks, as we can use two lanes instead of one, especially since we also have double the memory banks with DDR5. And all these features added according to Micron can lead up to an increase of 1.36 times of effective bandwidth at the same frequency, which is actually quite nice. And by the way, since we're talking about memory channels, there are some videos online that you can see that show that four memory sticks will be much faster than two memory sticks, but that's because they're using HDT processors, like for example Threadreapers or some Core i9 Extreme CPUs, um, like the ones that we had before, for example, on the 5000 series, basically HDT processors that support quad-channel or 256-bit buzz. So if you use four RAM sticks, it will indeed be quad-channel. But if you put those same four RAM sticks in a normal processor, like a Ryzen CPU, a normal Ryzen CPU, or a normal Core i5 or Core i7 or even the Core i9, it will still be dual channel because the CPU only supports 128-bit bus. What can happen, for example, is with DDR5, if you're running two sticks of 16 gigabytes, you're most likely running single rank, while two sticks of 32 gigabytes or four sticks of 16 gigabytes will provide you dual rank. And having two ranks per channel usually delivered better performance with DDR4, while it seems that with DDR5 it can vary. And I do know a bit about this topic, but if you think I was wrong in some part of the video, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section correcting me. And well, as for the testing methodology, we're using one run with the game only, basically only the game opened with no apps whatsoever, and then on the next run, another run basically with apps opened, I believe it was like 11 or 13 tabs, I believe it was 11, 11 tabs plus Discord opened, and uh, my brother made sure that every single tab was reopened before going into the game, uh, in the game run. So, uh, because sometimes when you run out of RAM, what happens is that the browser will kind of close some tabs, the tabs won't be closed, but it will be kind of cut down in order to save some RAM. And before going in each in each benchmark, my brother made sure that uh, the tabs were open before 
running the game. So we have the game only and the game plus apps, which is basically browser with 11 tabs and Discord opened at the same time because the reality is that most people nowadays are not just opening the game, they're opening the game with some apps in the background and that can affect the performance, especially since we're testing eight gigabytes as well. So let's go to the benchmarks. Starting with Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, we can see immediately that at 1080p the 32GB kit performed as it should with no drops whatsoever when having the apps opened at the same time, while the 16GB kit somehow had slightly higher averages but had a big drop in the 1% lows compared to when running the game only. And that poor single channel 8GB stick would just get the game closed as soon as we loaded the apps at the same time. At 1440p, the 8GB results get worse with huge stutters, making the 1% lows drop to 2 FPS even with the game only, but with a 16GB kit doing decently well with the apps open now. Something that gets maintained at 4K, where even the 8GB kit, or in this case the 8GB stick, can catch up in terms of averages, but won't be able to deliver a smooth experience at all. With Assassin's Creed Mirage, it seems that we suffer a lot with the 8GB stick in terms of averages and especially in the 1% lows when using the apps at the same time. Drops to 1 FPS, which is insane actually. At 1440p things run the same way, with the 32GB option being a bit faster and losing almost no performance when using the apps at the same time, and at 4K it seems that the 8GB kit was finally able to catch up. I believe this is because things are now pending much more to the GPU side, meaning that we get lower FPS and that requires less transfers in between the CPU and RAM, making the 8GB option able to deliver at least decent results. Hogwarts Legacy is a game that I've seen allocating over 20GB of RAM and I remember seeing it actually reaching around 24GB of RAM after a while. In terms of 1080p results, well, we see the 32GB performing better and more stable in terms of average FPS, basically losing none, with the 16GB kit losing a lot of 1% lows when running apps at the same time, and the 8GB stick delivering not only lower averages, but an unplayable experience with lots of stutters even when running the game only. At 1440p the FPS output is less, so the 8GB stick managed to get better results when only running the game, with the 32GB kit having some weird FPS drops when running the game alone, somehow. But at 4K though, the 8GB stick does perform better, since we're pushing less FPS. But as soon as we run apps in the background, the game will immediately quit to desktop with no warning whatsoever. Even here, the 16GB kit did perform worse when tested with apps opened, while the 32GB kit performed basically the same. Cyberpunk 2077 is a game that doesn't use that much RAM. At 1080p the only slower option was the 8GB stick, being slightly slower on average, but delivering considerably lower 1% lows. At 1440p though it seems that the 8GB stick does get some ground and it is now almost on par with the other kits, bringing virtually equal averages but once again lower 1% lows. And at 4K, I mean, it finally manages to be on par with the other kits, as we're only pushing 67 average FPS and the GPU is doing the biggest amount of work here. Counter-Strike 2 was tested in 3 rounds gameplay around Dust 2, which may lead to bigger inconsistencies. Gladly, the in-the-work CPU benchmarks are now done using the replay feature, for more reliable results. But well, at 1080p the only setup suffering is the 8GB one that performs considerably worse due to being only single channel, and much worse with apps because, well, it's 8GB. At 1440p the FPS output is lower and the 8GB stick starts getting closer to the 16GB kit, delivering way lower 1% lows with apps though, and at 4K, well, we're below 400 FPS and we can see that the 8GB stick does a decent job here, performing generally worse of course, but if you're only gaming with not, without any app opened actually, it should be at least ok in this game. Not good or great of course, but definitely ok. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 was one of those games that actually surprised me a lot since even with only 8GB and single channel, the results were basically the same at 1080p, with the bottleneck being the Ryzen 5 7600X. At 1440p the only setup that loses a bit of performance when using the apps at the same time is the 8GB one, which was actually expected of course. And at 4K we have exactly the same results for all setups, meaning that this game doesn't really care much about RAM capacity or at least it seems so. 
In The Last of Us, though, things are entirely different, with the 8GB stick managing to make the game quit the desktop as soon as we try to run it with the apps at the same time, with the other two configurations, well, running just fine, and the 32GB one being slightly faster, of course. At 1440p, the FPS output is less, and both 16 and 32GB kits are tied performance-wise, with the 8GB stick now being quite close as well, but not being able to finish the benchmark when running the apps at the same time. Something that only gets worse at 4K, where the 8GB stick wouldn't even be able to run the game solo, and would immediately quit to desktop after some seconds. As for the other configurations, well, they delivered exactly the same results. Spider-Man Remastered is a game that needs a lot of memory bandwidth to work properly, and that's why we have the 8GB stick performing so poorly. Not because of capacity per se, but because of bandwidth as it is only running single channel. At 1440p things get more in line, with a 16GB kit losing a bit of performance when using the apps, and the 8GB stick, well, still being unusable, and that's something that gets exactly maintained at 4K, where both 16 and 32GB kits deliver, well, very playable results. But as we enable ray tracing, things get a bit odd, to be sincere. The 8GB stick still performs like crap, but the 16GB kit delivered some odd results, with the game only somehow being faster than the 32GB kit, but with the app's results being considerably lower, which once again is kind of odd. At 1440p, things get more stable in terms of average FPS, comparing the 16 versus 32GB kits, with the 16GB one now being slower with the apps opened, but the 8GB stick isn't even able to run the game with the apps in the background now. And that 4K, well, it is more or less the same, but for the bigger capacity setups. Since the FPS output was less now, both are delivering more or less the same results. Moving to Unreal Engine 5, we have Robocop Rock City. In this case, we're pushing over 180 FPS, and I believe that's why the 8GB stick performed considerably worse in the 1% lows as well, while the other kits were inside the margin of error. Margin that gets smaller at 1440p, where all setups are delivering around the same average FPS, but with the 8GB stick still delivering the lower 1% lows, the lowest 1% lows. But that little difference goes away at 4K, where all the three setups are delivering the same FPS numbers, since, well, the FPS output at this resolution is also quite lower. And moving back to Unreal Engine 4, we have PUBG, which sincerely is not that demanding at all on the RAM side, but I still decided to test it as its player base is still, well, decently large. At 1080p, we have the 32GB kit delivering a bit more FPS, around 5%, with the only difference being when using the 8GB stick, that still delivers lower 1% lows as expected. At 1440p things are more or less in line with what we saw before, with all differences being around the margin of error, with only a slight FPS drop in the game only run when, with the, when using the 16GB somehow, sorry. And at 4K the FPS does get cut down by a lot, but the 8GB stick still delivers lower 1% lows compared to the other options, most likely due to being single channel only, I believe. And now we're back with Unreal Engine 5 once again, and we have Fortnite using Epic settings, Nanite geometry, Lumen set to Epic, and TSR upscaling to quality mode. At 1080p things are where they should be, with the 8GB stick delivering around 10% less FPS and having the 1% lows dropping with apps opened, as opposed to the other setups. At 1440p the 16 and 32GB kits are now delivering the same performance and the 8GB stick is getting really close to them, with slightly lower values, finally matching them at 4K, as we were only pushing slightly over 70 FPS. It seems that the RAM capacity isn't really an issue with Fortnite, even in 2024. As for the average results, even without the apps running in the background, the 8GB stick was considerably inferior, since some games didn't even finish the benchmark, and some others like Spider-Man Remastered have awful results. On the other hand, 16GB is the bare minimum we should get today with EDR5, and it sincerely still performs quite well for gaming only. It will suffer a bit more with the apps in the background, of course, compared to 32GB, but you'll still be able to play most games without a single issue, with maybe a sporadic stutter here and there depending on the game. But RAM is one of those things that more is never worse. 
And so guys, as you saw, well, we can see that 8 gigabytes specially single channel, because once again, the DR5 minimum cap capacity per stick, I believe it's 8 gigabytes, at least for the desktop side, and 8 gigabytes just won't cut it. You can indeed play some games, or at least most games with 8 gigabytes, if you're not playing with apps, of course, otherwise the game will just quit to desktop, randomly quit to desktop. 8 gigabytes are enough for most games nowadays, once again, nowadays, only if you're running the game only and still you'll have some stutters here and there because when loading new parts 8 gigabytes just won't suffice you have a stutter here you have a stutter there as soon as you move to 16 gigabytes playing with apps or without them well the performance drop the performance would, would just be good you'll have some performance drop when running apps in the, in the background just a little bit in some cases depending on the game but once again since you're running dual channel and you're running 16 gigabytes you'll have a lot less stutters when entering new areas in the games for example the one of the one of the biggest things that i noticed when changing from 8 gigabytes to 16 gigabytes and that was like two or three years ago was uh for example in shadow of the tomb raider when i was loading a new area with 16 gigabytes of ram it was smooth and with 8 gigabytes of ram i would enter the area then i would have like a one or two second stutter mo mostly like one second stutter like them and then the area would be loading and everything would run smooth but when i was loading that same area i would have a stutter one second stutter run that and that's basically what's happening right now with 8 gigabytes but it's even worse. Now we have NVMEs, uh, we have very fast SSDs to, to help those scenarios, we have direct storage to help as well, uh, but RAM is still needed and more is never worse. So if you can get, for example, 32 gigabytes, I believe that the sweet spot with DDR5 is 32 gigabytes because the RAM is cheap. You can get a 32 gigabytes kit for like 120 bucks or sometimes even less. And it is usually they are pretty decent kits. So I see no reason to get less than that unless you are on a really, really tight budget. For these benchmarks, 8 gigabytes were basically just in the name of science because nobody is using 8 gigabytes with DDR5. And if they are, they shouldn't be. 16 gigabytes is even less expensive than 32 gigabytes, and 32 gigabytes is already pretty cheap. So my advice is, if you can, if you have the money, just go for 32 gigabytes because they perform better. If you want to have apps open in the background, several tabs, um, maybe some other applications at the same time. Uh, even for example, if you're editing, you just instead of closing the, the software, you can simply minimize the software, go play a game, uh, and you still won't run out of RAM, while if you are using 16 gigabytes, well, that may happen. So 32 gigabytes as the sweet spot for sure, but 16 gigabytes will still suffice as it is the bare minimum. You'll have slightly lower performance with, with apps open, but it will still be more than enough for 90% of people. So yeah. Thank you very much for watching the video, guys. Don't forget, leave, leave a like. <laughs> leave a like in the comment section. That's, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> Leave a comment in the comment section, leave a like in the video, thank you very much if you enjoyed the video and share it if you think that these results are relevant for 2024 and if you want many other people to actually see the results that I'm presenting right now. I believe these results are interesting, especially on the 8GB side um, with some very interesting scenarios of games not even running, of games not even booting or in some other scenarios like Spider-Man where the performance is just crap and going from 8 to 16 makes a huge difference. Once again, thank you for watching the video and see you in the next one, guys. Cheers.